Welcome back everybody. I am so excited to have another video for you guys and this is part of our series of tips and tricks and standards. Everything that will help you create a very, very functional design. I have a saying and it is function over fashion. It's always fun to pick all the colors, but in the end when your kitchen is installed, you will notice really quick if you missed out on some aspects that will help you have a very, very functional kitchen, okay? So today we are going to talk about working heights. What is a good working height? Why should I even consider different kind of worktop heights? Where does it come from? And how can I actually integrate it using American cabinet brands? And some tips and tricks on that, how to save some money there and like um, to really integrate that the correct way. And bonus, if you watch all the way to the very end, you can actually find out how you can win a free design session with me where I can deep dive into your project. We'll hop on a Zoom call and uh, I can give you some really good feedback on your project that you're working on right now. My name is Kasten with The Material Bar here in Washington and I'm excited to dive right into this topic with you. Okay, quick little backstory if you're new to this channel. I am actually, I was born and raised in Germany, okay, Bavaria, southern part, best part, okay, and I'm totally used to like all the different standards and like features that we have in German kitchen design, and then when I started working here in the U.S. as a kitchen designer, I realized really quickly that we're missing out on some cool features that could be very beneficial, and the reason why Germans have those standards is because Germans are very, very forward-thinking when it comes to body ergonomics, and I have a couple of different videos on German kitchen design. Um, go ahead, check them out. But let's say you're working on a kitchen, you bought a home, you want this to be your let's say forever home, you know, or I have a friend, she calls it her 20 year home. You really want to make sure that when you're remodeling this kitchen, that you're also thinking about your body. You want this kitchen to be so functional that you're not having to excessively bend down or, or put your back into movements that will put a strain on your back, okay? So what we're trying to do is use a couple of standards, a couple of tips and tricks from German kitchen design that will help you, uh, yeah, put less stress on your back, honestly, and, and just think a little bit more about your body ergonomics and that will help you just live a healthier life, okay? You're in your kitchen a lot, you're prepping in your kitchen a lot and working in your kitchen a lot, so this can definitely make a difference. And the big topic that we're going to be addressing today is different cabinet heights. Okay, so, and you know, let, let me just set this, this record really straight. We're not necessarily talking about the finish height of the cabinet, but rather the finish height of the work top, okay? So we took a German chart that actually gives you really good indicators on your body's heights and what would be the perfect working height for you depending on the size or the height of your body, okay? So that's kind of like number one, how to get to this number, and then there's another version of this calculation that I'll show you here in just a second. But first, uh, we took this chart, we actually translated it. Courtney, thank you, Courtney, you're awesome. Um, we actually translated it from centimeters into inches, and um, as an example, right now, I'm just using my own body height, so I am, just shy of 170 centimeters, which equals about five foot five here in the US. And according to this chart, if I calculate through it, it would say that with about 170 centimeters, the perfect working height for me of a finished worktop would be roughly 95 centimeters from the floor. Okay, so that in US inches is roughly 37.4 inches. And in the US market, the standard for a Finnish countertop height, your standard work height, if you don't discuss any kind of heights with anybody that you're working with, is typically 36 inches. And it comes from 34.5 inches, that's typically the Finnish height of a standard kitchen base cabinet, plus roughly 1.5 inches on your countertop, okay? So that's just by default. So going back to the calculation I just went through using my own body height, I would actually have a perfect working height at the 37.5-ish inches from the floor. So that means increasing my worktop height by 1.5 inches would be ideal for my body. 
And I will jump into a couple of tricks how we can actually achieve that without necessarily using custom cabinets, but I'll go into that in just a second. But let's discuss the second way on how you calculate the perfect working height for your body. The second way that you can find out the perfect working height for your body is to use the elbow method, okay? So you stand straight and very just relaxed, and then you angle your arm into a 90 degree position, and you measure from the elbow to the floor. And then take that measurement, that's basically from your elbow to your floor, from the floor to your elbow, okay? And you deduct roughly four to six inches, okay? Now I did that example and I measured 41.5 inches from the floor to my elbow when I was standing like this, just very comfortably. And minus four inches, 41.5, it brought me right back to the 37.5, which is pretty funny how accurate everything was. But you can be a little bit flexible here. You can, you know, it's anywhere from like four to six inches. So that's also keeping in mind if somebody is like super tall. Um, and you also want to take these measurements on the person that's necessarily like the one that's the main focus in the kitchen. So the one that's usually doing most of the work in the kitchen, that's kind of the one that you want to take these measurements on or find a nice medium if you have two people that are, you know, one person might be a little bit shorter and the other one's super tall, okay? Now, how do I actually make it happen? How can I actually raise my cabinets? Now we figured out I need to add about 1.5 inches to my worktop areas. So I would be in a perfect working height for my body. And there's a couple of easy ways. The easiest way, completely the easiest, and this is going to be the most cost efficient way, how to raise your overall worktop height is using a taller toe kick. And a lot of times cabinets already come with a toe kick. It's pre-built into the cabinet, but you can order cabinets without a toe kick and then simply have your installers build a taller toe kick on site. So uh, in most cabinet lines, with exceptions, the toe kick is typically 4.5 inches tall. So if I was to raise my toe kick just by 1.5 inches to a six inch toe kick, and I can still cover it, I'm keeping the box the same, I'm just raising everything, and then adding my countertop, I would actually land at 37.5 inches. And here's another thing, you can do it around the entire perimeter of your kitchen, or you can simply do this effect on your island. And if I'm doing it on my island, a lot of times from the back, if I'm looking into the kitchen, I'm not necessarily seeing the toe kick, right? It's on the other side. I probably have paneling to the floor on the back and on the sides of the island. So it, would, it wouldn't be as noticeable, but I think another factor that you can do that will help you not like noticing it so visually would be to maybe do a flush toe cake. So just building out the toe cake to have a flush toe cake and maybe just building an island that looks a little bit more like furniture style if you tend to have different heights in your kitchen or different toe cake heights in your kitchen, okay? Now, something that I want to call out is too that the, the number one reason why a lot of times a different kind of working height in the kitchen does not work is because of the appliances that you're using, okay? So for example, a range needs to line up with your worktops. And you really want to check with your range manufacturer, read the specs and see how tall can I actually adjust the feet so I could potentially raise my working height so it can align. But this is also a reason why, just one of the many reasons, why you actually see a lot of uses of cooktops in German kitchen design. So ranges are not as common there as they are here in the US. A lot of people have a cooktop and then they have a built-in oven somewhere else in their kitchen. And when you have a cooktop, now you can totally play with the height of your worktop. There's no interference right there. Another great way how you can raise the overall working height in your kitchen is by adding a thicker countertop, okay? Now, most countertops come in either a 2CM or a 3CM thick material. 3CM has been the most standard thickness of countertops. It's roughly 1.5 inches. It's actually a little bit less, and there's probably gonna be somewhere out there who's going to comment and put the exact amount down there, and that's fine, but roughly, it's about 1.5 inches thick. Now, this is going to be a little bit more expensive expensive to go this route 
because if it's three centimeters thick and I want an even thicker countertop, that means the shop will have to take material and miter it around all of the edges. So it's a lot more labor intensive and typically you don't end up doing this in your entire kitchen. What you could do is do it just on an island and it actually looks pretty cool. It's a cool feature because it just adds like this I don't know, there's a very cool visual and interest when your island top is like super chunky, but in the back of my mind, it's like, oh man, this is awesome because it's also raising my height. So it's not just cool for visual, it's also very good for the actual function of my workspace. And the last option is of course, using more of a custom cabinet line and just increasing the actual box height, right? So typically your boxes are around 30 inches tall. So I would be increasing my cabinet box to 31.5. So I can add that 1.5 inches to the overall height in my case. And cool side effect is I do get a little bit of extra storage, but it really depends on the cabinet line that you're working with. If you're working with a semi-custom cabinet line, which is what most, um, kind of like what most manufacturers are these days, once you go out of that realm of their standards, you start paying a lot of additional charges. We actually have a custom cabinet line to where there's no additional charge just for raising the height, you just pay for the extra material. So it just depends on the cabinet line that you're working with. It does not have to be a crazy amount. Just again, you have to start with the right kind of cabinet line. But um, yeah, you can totally just add the overall height of your cabinet box. You get a little bit more storage and then you can keep a cohesive toe kick all throughout. Um, and some people also just don't like the look of like a taller toe cake. So again, there's a lot of personal preference flowing into it. There's appliances that are flowing into it. And then there's obviously the cabinet brand and the kitchen designer and um, everybody that's involved in your project that's kind of flowing into this aspect as well. So it's up to you to figure out the right kind of route to go in this situation. And if you missed out on it, we actually posted another video as part of our series for like the ultimate functional kitchen layout and that was all about standards so we will have the link below make sure to check out that video it's all about standards that you should be incorporating if you can check the boxes on those guidelines that are from the nkba the national kitchen and bath association if you can check off those boxes as as good as you can in your layout you will notice that function and it will just flow in your kitchen while you're working on it okay and as I promised, so we have a bonus for you guys and it's really cool. So what I ran into was we, we get a lot of comments from you guys working on your projects, but then because on YouTube we can only comment, sometimes we're missing out on some images and obviously I wanna help you guys and that's the whole reason why I started this channel because it's been very rewarding to help people from like all around and really fun. And that's why we're building a community. So we have a link below. It is 100% for free. Hop on, come join our private community and you can actually post questions. You can get inside updates that are maybe not found anywhere else on our channels. And once a month, we actually pick a lucky winner and yeah, we'll just do a Zoom, we'll jump into your project, I'll kind of deep dive into what's going on and where you have your questions. And it can be anything, it doesn't just have to be your kitchen design, it could be, hey, I'm stuck with these finishes, I can't make up my mind, like what are you thinking? Or you might be in an active kitchen remodel or even a bathroom remodel and you're running into some challenges, okay? So I would love to see you guys in our private community, we have the link below and maybe you can be the lucky winner and then we'll hop on a Zoom and discuss your project 100% for free. And yeah, if you have any questions in regards to working counter heights and uh, about this video, make sure to post your comments below or your questions and we will get back to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.